We bless the name of the Lord. We give him thanks. We give him praise for this opportunity to be at his feet this time. We honor him for who he is. I just, before we get into the scriptures today, I want to remind you of one thing, that these virus are still around. That is why you see me here, this, just to demonstrate that protect yourself. Be ready when you are going out. Make sure you are protected. And may God bless you. Learn to clean, wash your hands as they have instructed us. And be, submit to those simple instruction and protect yourself and God will bless you. Amen. Let's bow ahead for prayer. Father, we bless your name, O oh God. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your presence today. Oh, God, bring illumination and understanding to the Holy Scriptures, even as we open your word. And let the name of the Lord be praised. We honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. But the angel of the Lord told the woman, Don't be afraid, because I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Six. He is not here, for he has been Reason, just as he said, come see the place where he lay. It's interesting that when he rose again, there were a lot of evidence. Today, we're going to the second part of our message, he is risen. But I want you to know something, that his tomb is still empty. They show the woman on the, the one, that he is risen, he is not here. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. Amen. He is risen. He is risen. And he is alive forevermore. Amen. You see, when you think about Jesus' resurrection, I want to make a statement. It's very important. The whole of the Christian faith is based on Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who rose again from the dead. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father and majesty. And all power and all dominion is given to him. So when we mention this subject, he is risen. I want you to know that there is a need to emphasize and then learn many aspects of it. Amen. So today we want to continue where we left the other time. The other time... We talk about Christ who is risen, who had all power and all might and all dominion given to him. But today, we want to examine some of the things he himself bear testimony of. For instance, when you read the scriptures, Luke 24, on the way of Amos, Emmaus, that road, he had an encounter with his friends. Leopas and his friend. They met with the Lord and then he had some discussions. They are very informing. And I want us to look at this scripture. Luke 24, let's take the verse 16, okay? But their eyes were, were holding that they should not know him. Now the question is, why will God intentionally withhold this from them? Knowing that they were disciples, people who walk with Jesus. Why will the Lord just intentionally withhold it? It has a meaning and it's very important, very fundamental. They were afraid and also they did not believe. They did not believe. I want you to emphasize this. If you will not believe, there is no way you can relate to the risen Christ. He is dead. He was buried. His reason, all that he had done for humanity, the basis of relating to him or benefiting from whatever he had done for you is believing him. These were two disciples who will not believe what the prophet has said. Let's get to 25. And Jesus says something. 
Then he said unto them, Oh, fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered all these things and enter into his glory? Listen. The scriptures have declared this. That Christ should suffer and be crucified. And the third day, he will rise again. But when you look at it, it's interesting how they behave. Why would they not believe? The issue is very simple. All that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, have done, his death and resurrection, his burial, ascending to hell, defeating Satan and all the dominion, why would that benefit anyone? The only way that can ha you can benefit or you can be blessed is simply you believe the gospel as it's being preached to you. But you see, when you look to the scripture, there are disciples who accepted Jesus all right, but if you have difficulty in believing what the scriptures have said. Example, Thomas, when we look to John 20, when Jesus appeared to the disciples, Thomas was not there. The other disciple told him, the Lord has been here, he assured himself, uh, me, until I see him and touch his palm and feel it, yagami, feel it, feel it, touch, feel the palms. Make sure I hold it, I will not believe. You, you, I, don't, I don't want you to tell me. So later Jesus appeared to you and said, Thomas, Thomas, come and feel my palm and touch my sides and my wounds. Now Thomas saw him. He knew that this is the Lord. But the challenge he had was, what is he going to do? And Jesus said, Blessed are those who do not see but believe. Brethren, the, the issue is that Christ has changed. And this is what we are going to emphasize today. When you look to him, he is not a changed being. He is not the same Jesus who was at the dead uh, shores of Galilee. No, he is not the same person. He is changed and in this state in which he is now. The only way to connect to him, the only way to access into his grace, the only way to receive anything from him is simply believing what has been declared. This is the fundamental of the faith. If you do not believe, brother, why do we preach and why do we make so much noise? The whole thing is that Jesus Christ is risen. He has all power, all authority and dominion is given to him. But unless you believe what the scriptures have said, there's no place. It will be there and it will be held. Let's get back to our Emmanuel story. This guy will not believe. And Jesus now began to explain to them all that have happened. How the scripture should be fulfilled. They were silent. He said, when he was sp sp speaking with them, they felt that their heart was being touched. The words of Jesus Christ will convict you that they could not say anything. Now they came to a place. Jesus pretended like he was moving on. But they said, no, come. It's too late. Come and dine with us. So as they sat at the table, Jesus took the bread and then he blessed it. And these people have had so many times of Jesus. So they knew him by experience. They knew how Jesus would bless the food. And so when he went, the same thing, blessing the food, now they, this is Jesus. And he disappeared. Immediately they rushed back to Jerusalem to report. What am I saying, brother? The reason Christ, you don't need to see him. All you need to do is believe what the scriptures have said. Amen. Believe what the scriptures have declared about him. But many people are struggling. Why are you struggling? You will struggle because the truth will be held from you. That is a lesson from ours. Please, this is what I want to emphasize today. He is risen. Yes, it's true. But how can that benefit me? It can benefit you. 
because of what he has done for you. He has shared his blood for the redemptions of our soul. He has paid a price for all things, for all humanity. In the presence of the Lord, he entered into the holy place once and for all to share his own blood to atone for our sins. Anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness. And this gospel is being preached everywhere. And everyone is given opportunity. But if you will not believe, it will be withheld from you. Because the scripture said, the preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are lost. It means the rational people, those who will not believe, it is simple. You will, there's no way. All you need to do is just simply repent and believe the gospel, and you'll be saved. Amen. Now, let's move on. We got to 24 to 31. It's very interesting. Let's start from 38. Let's start from 38. Luke 24 from 38. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, uh, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. Please hold on to this scripture. We want to analyze many, many things here. It's important. Jesus Christ himself, after the resurrection, this time he met his disciples, all the 11 of them, and he was giving evidence about himself. It's not somebody talking about him. He knew their doubts. He knew they were not fully persuaded. They were thinking, is he a spirit? What have we changed? The truth is this. No man has ever seen a resurrected person before. So where there is a vacuum, uh, no information, no knowledge, everybody makes some assumptions. And they were thinking that probably he's a spirit. He's a spirit we cannot see. But the truth is this. Jesus came and now he is giving evidence not about somebody but himself. Remember in the some of the scripture he has spoken after his resurrection and giving evidence. In fact, let me give you one scripture before we come to this. He said, I am he that liveth and died and behold I am alive forevermore and I hold the keys of hell and death. That is Revelation 1 18. The truth is this. He died, he was buried, he went to hell, he defeated Satan, he took the keys of hell and death from them. And now he is saying, Behold my hands, come and see it, feel it, touch it, and see my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Handle me and see. You see, he was disputing many things about the resurrection. Because there are those who think that he is risen, but he got into the change into the spirit, so you cannot see him. And people have their own diverse idea, but this is from the mouth of Jesus. According to Luke 24 39, this is the evidence. Jesus said, Behold my hands and my feet. Why? Because they saw him hang on the cross with the nails in his palm. They saw it. Come and see the print. It is still there. I am he, the original one who died. Come and see. Look at my feet. Where they pierce my bones. With that strong nail. Come and see. Handle me and see. And now, the second dispute is that he's turned into a spirit. He has a spiritual body. But listen. It is not a spirit as he suppose. He said... Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones. I want you to know that the resurrected body have what? Flesh and bones. And as he see me have. This is what he, he thought about himself. And now, after this, he, mo he moved on and said, I don't know, sure, sir. do you have some food here? Jesus 
making requests? Yes. 30, 41. Let's get to 40 and 41. And while they yet, and when he had not spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. 41. And while they yet believed not, for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? Or have ye here any food? Is there any food here so that I can eat in your presence? For it too, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb. That means they gave some food. And he took it and did eat before them. This one was no mystery or vision or those things. He demonstrated. I want you to see something about the resurrected person. There is none of his kind in the universe. He has bones. He had flesh. He did eat like a normal natural human being. But what, what, but he is a resurrected person. This is a man who is raising, but with this type of person, he can just simply go through the walls and appear when the doors are shut. When you cannot see him, he will just be there. Jesus, yes, he is a resurrected Christ. You see, so, but how can you understand that? <laughs> Brother, the, these things are mystery. They are higher than your imaginations and your thought. It is the Son of God revealed. The superhuman person. Who he is. Revealing who he is to humanity. It is beyond any academic exercise. It is just beyond it. The only way to understand is to embrace what he had declared about himself. And immediately you embrace it. He will help you to understand. And you will now that the scriptures will begin to fall in place. Otherwise, it will still be hidden from you. Many people are struggling with the scripture. You will struggle with it. Because it is not by rational thinking that you understand. But when you approach the scriptures with the heart of faith, the Lord will begin to reveal and bring you understanding. Remember, Copas and the friend, it was withheld from them. Now Jesus has given his evidence. And now we know who he is. He is the risen Christ. He has his power and authority and dominion is given to him. Now, what can we do? The truth is this. This same Jesus, who has power, now want to be a blessing to humanity. Want to be a blessing to you. Want to be a blessing to me. Want to come your way and help you in your situation and in your life. But until you have understanding and faith in him, you cannot assess his grace and all the benefit he comes along. Hallelujah. He had died for sinners. That is why you don't, you don't have to continue with guilt and condemnation. When you repent and believe, you will be forgiven. That is who he is. He is the savior of the world. For he declared, the son of man came to seek and to save those who are lost. And he's willing to save us. In fact, he is not willing that any should, should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Actually, he has shed his blood for you and for me. And paid for this with his own blood. That your sins will not be a burden again. He had paid for it before the Father. Now let's move on. But because of all that he had done, how can that benefit me? You need to repent and believe the scriptures that have been declared. Now. After he had done all these things, he gave commandment to the apostles. Go and preach this gospel to all men, everywhere. That those who believe will be saved. Anyone who believes. But how can that happen? Yes. There must be first of all the proclamation or the preaching of the gospel. Being declared to all men and giving opportunity to everyone. I came your way. 
this hour to let you know that you are given opportunity in the name of Jesus Christ to receive all that Christ has done for you. You can be saved because he is the savior of your soul. You can be healed because he said, I am the Lord that he left thee. You can be filled with the spirit because he is a baptizer of the Holy Spirit. Now Peter had a meeting in the house of Colonos. I go to Acts chapter number 10. Acts 10. And from 39. And we are witnesses of all these things. Which he did both in the land of the Jews. And in Jerusalem. Whom they slew and hung on a tree. Mm -hmm. 40. Him God raised up the third day. And show him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen of before of God, even to, to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Now I want you to see something here, very, very, very important. Jesus rose from the dead, but he had a dinner and lunch with the disciples. He they did eat with him. In fact, I would say, when we get to heaven, we're going to have a Lord's Supper. We're going to, the, the blessed are those who are invited to the Lord's Supper. We will we'll dine with him. Yes. And he commanded us to preach and, unto the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Now listen. After he had done all these things, all the work and all that he had accomplished by himself, there's something which you need to know is that Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the Savior of the world, died with his disciples and also gave them a commandment, a commandment unto us to preach unto the people. And to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. Now, he say, but what is that to me? Listen, the gospel will be preached anyway, but anyone who repents and believes receive the benefit of it. The blessings of the Lord can come to you by the preaching of the gospel. That is why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now, this gospel has power because Jesus Christ who sent us has said, all power are given unto me in heaven and on the earth. Go ye therefore in my name. Now, brethren, the truth is this. When we preach Christ to you and you believe, then there will be the demonstration and the manifestation of the gospel because Christ is alive forevermore. I'm coming to you this hour to let you know that this same Jesus who rose again from the dead, he is alive today and is willing to heal to deliver and to help you. Any need, any challenge in your life, any burden in your life, I want you to know that Jesus is risen. That Jesus Christ is risen. And that he is still in the serving and in the healing business. He is still doing it. Christ is a savior. Christ is a healer. Christ is a baptizer of the Holy Spirit. All power is given to him to heal and to deliver. Brother, listen. We are in a meeting in Kumase. And they were preaching on Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And we were sharing that Jesus is the same. He is a savior. He is a healer. He is a baptizer. So we may, first of all, we make altar call for those who need to be saved? They came forward 
And those who need to be healed, they came into the healing night, we lay hands on them, pray for them, some of them, some of them are healed. And now, we pray for those who need the Holy Spirit. He said, how? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Wherever the gospel is preached by faith in his name, he comes in to confirm his word. I come to tell you this hour, that he had this. Jesus Christ wants to come your way. He wants to help you with every need. Whatever the burden is, whatever the challenge is, because he has not changed, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is risen and all power is given unto him. And in his name, every demon will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord. And every power is subject to him. Every demon activity must cease in his name. Because, listen, he is still raised in the affairs of men. That is why I'm coming to you this hour and I want to be praying with you now. I, I, I want to declare to you that the Savior, the healer, the baptizer is at, on your side right now. You say, Pastor, how? How can I know? Listen, the risen Christ have filled the heavens and the earth of his glory. He is at the same place. He is at all places at the same time throughout the universe. Heaven and earth. From Los Angeles to Tokyo to Sydney to Accra to Sunyane, London, everywhere. He has filled the universe. This is the Christ whom we preach to you. That is why somebody can be praised. The, the other people can be praying around the globe at all at the same time. And he will hear it. Why? He is everywhere at the same time. Even as I'm reaching you right now. He's the other ends of the world. Why? He is no reason. He is not that man of Galilee who was in the shores of Galilee. No. He is a risen Christ whose presence and glory have filled the earth. He is the exalted one who is given a name above every other name and that his name every knee bow. He is the son of God with power. He is the Christ whom we believe. I come to you in his name and in his name let every demon bow. Let every foul spirit submit. Let every sinner repent. Let the power of God penetrate through right now to you wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ. He is a risen Christ. Father in the name of Jesus let the yoke be broken because Jesus is risen. Let the burden be lifted now because Jesus is risen. Let his name be glorified because he's exalted and glorified one. I come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray every look. Let the burden be lifted. Let the sick be healed. Let every sinner turn his heart to him now because he is still the same yesterday day and forever hear me somebody now raise your hand wherever you are and you want to give your life to Jesus I want to pray with you father in the name of Jesus Christ see these hands raised I pray your grace and spirit upon their life reveal yourself and show yourself mighty and strong on their behalf I pray the blood of Jesus Christ to claim them save their soul Forgive every sin. I plead the blood over them. Oh God. As they receive you into their heart. Lord please come into their heart. And turn their life situation around. Forgive them of all that they have done wrong. And may the presence of the Lord be your portion. For I bless your name Lord. For your mercy toward them. I give you thanks. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. We thank God for this opportunity of coming your way. You're giving your life to Jesus Christ. We want you to connect to a church where you can be blessed. In these seasons and these challenging times, may the ministering angels of God keep watch over you and to protect your life and family. In Jesus' name, amen.
God bless you. And we'll see you the same time next week. God bless you. Thank you.